The AI world just exploded with announcements that could fundamentally change how we interact with artificial intelligence forever. From OpenAI launching their most advanced voice model yet, to Microsoft finally breaking free from OpenAI dependency, this week proved that the AI arms race just hit hyperdrive. Welcome back to bitbiased.ai, where we do the research so you don't have to. Today we're diving deep into six massive AI developments that are reshaping the entire landscape. And trust me, by the end of this video, you'll understand why some of these announcements have industry insiders calling this the most important week in AI since GPT-4's launch. Here's what dominated headlines this week. OpenAI just launched GPT Realtime, a breakthrough voice model that processes speech directly without transcription delays. XAI dropped Grok code fast one with pricing so aggressive it's causing panic among competitors. Microsoft unveiled their first fully in-house AI models, signaling their independence from OpenAI. Google made vids generally available with AI avatars that could replace human presenters. A tragic lawsuit against OpenAI raises serious questions about AI safety. And in a lighter note, Taco Bell's AI drive through is getting absolutely roasted by customers having way too much fun with it. But here's what most people are missing. These aren't just product launches. They're strategic moves in a chess game that will determine who controls the future of human AI interaction. Let's break down what really happened and why it matters for your future. Story 1. OpenAI's voice revolution. GPT real-time changes everything. OpenAI just dropped what might be their most important release since ChatGPT itself. GPT real-time is a speech-to-speech -speech model that's fundamentally different from anything we've seen before. And I'm not just talking about incremental improvements. This is a complete paradigm shift. Here's why this matters. Traditional voice AI systems are basically Frankenstein monsters. They take your speech, convert it to text, process that text through an AI model, generate a text response, and then convert that back to speech. It's like playing telephone with four different systems, and you lose something in every translation. GPT real-time throws all of that out the window. It processes audio directly through a single neural network. This means it can detect things previous models completely missed, the pause in your voice when you're thinking, the tone that suggests you're frustrated, even the subtle cues that indicate you're about to switch languages mid-sentence. And speaking of language switching, this thing can seamlessly handle conversations where you jump between languages. Try that with Siri and watch it have a complete meltdown. But here's the game-changing part. The new API doesn't just handle speech. It supports image inputs, tool integrations, and even SIP phone calling. This means developers can now build AI systems that can see, hear, think, and act, all in real-time conversation. Think about the implications. Customer service centers where AI agents can read your facial expressions during video calls. Language learning platforms where the AI tutor can hear your pronunciation mistakes and correct them instantly. Business meetings where AI assistants can follow the conversation, read the room, and provide contextual information without missing a beat. Industry analysts are calling this OpenAI's direct shot at voice-first companies like Eleven Labs and Speechmatics, but I think they're missing the bigger picture. This isn't just about competing with voice companies. This is about making voice the primary interface for AI interaction. OpenAI is betting that we're moving toward a world where typing to AI will seem as outdated as using a fax machine. Story 2. XAI triggers price. War with Grok Code. Fast 1. While OpenAI was revolutionizing voice, Elon Musk's XAI was quietly preparing to blow up the entire coding AI market. They just released Grok Code Fast 1, and the pricing is so aggressive that it's causing genuine panic among competitors. Let me put these numbers in perspective. Grok Code Fast 1 costs just 20 cents per million input tokens and $1.50 per million output tokens. To understand how insane this is, that's roughly 5 to 10 times cheaper than comparable models from GitHub Copilot Enterprise or other major players. But here's what makes this even more dangerous for competitors. It's not just cheap, it's fast. We're talking 160 tokens per second, which means you can generate and debug code faster than you can probably read it. Now XAI is being smart about this. They're not trying to compete with the enterprise-level, multi-agent coding platforms that can build entire applications. Instead, they're targeting a specific niche. Developers who need quick, affordable assistance with everyday coding tasks. Refactoring functions, catching bugs, generating boilerplate code, the bread and butter stuff that developers do dozens of times per day. This pricing strategy is classic Elon Musk. 
Remember when Tesla started selling electric cars at prices that made traditional automakers sweat? Or when SpaceX undercut launch prices by 90%? Musk's playbook is always the same. Use aggressive pricing to force entire industries to restructure. The real target here isn't the big tech companies with unlimited budgets. It's the millions of independent developers, startups, and educational institutions who've been priced out of AI-powered coding tools. By making these tools accessible to everyone, XAI is essentially democratizing AI-assisted programming. And here's the strategic element most people are missing. This isn't just about coding tools. This is about building the largest possible user base for XAI's platform. Once you have millions of developers dependent on your tools, you can upsell them to more advanced services, collect massive amounts of coding data to improve your models, and create a network effect that makes it harder for competitors to catch up. Story 3. Microsoft's Declaration of Independence In what might be the most strategically significant announcement of the week, Microsoft just unveiled their first fully in-house AI models, MAI Voice 1 and MAI 1 Preview. And while the technical specs are impressive, the real story here is what this represents. Microsoft's Declaration of Independence from OpenAI. Let's start with the technical achievements. May I Voice 1 can generate one minute of natural sounding speech in just one second. To put that in perspective, that's fast enough for real-time conversation with essentially zero latency. It's already integrated into Copilot apps, and early users are reporting that voice interactions feel dramatically more responsive. May I One Preview is even more intriguing. Despite being trained on far fewer GPUs than models like GPT-4 or Claude Sonnet, early benchmarks suggest it's performing competitively on LM Arena. This suggests Microsoft has made significant breakthroughs in training efficiency, getting more capability per dollar spent on compute. But here's the real story. Microsoft is hedging their bets. Their partnership with OpenAI has been incredibly successful, but it's also created a dangerous dependency. What happens if OpenAI decides to prioritize their own products over Microsoft's? What if they raise prices? What if they develop capabilities that they don't want to share? By developing their own models, Microsoft is ensuring they can't be held hostage by their AI partner. It's a classic business strategy. Maintain the partnership while building alternatives. This move also positions Microsoft uniquely in the enterprise market. While other cloud providers are essentially reselling someone else's AI, Microsoft can now offer customers AI that's specifically optimized for their infrastructure and services. This could become a significant competitive advantage as enterprises become more sophisticated about their AI requirements. The timing is perfect too. As AI models become more standardized and commoditized, the real differentiation will come from integration, optimization, and cost efficiency. Microsoft's in-house models give them control over all three factors. Story 4. Google Vids goes mainstream with AI avatars. Google just made a move that could fundamentally change how we think about video content creation. They've made vids generally available to all Google Workspace users, and the new features are genuinely impressive and slightly unsettling. The big addition is integration with VO3, Google's video generation model. Users can now upload a static image, write a text prompt, and generate dynamic video content. But that's just the beginning. The real game changer is the customizable talking avatars. These aren't cartoon avatars or obviously fake digital characters. These are lifelike avatars that can be customized for corporate, educational, or marketing use cases. You input text, and the avatar delivers it with synchronized facial movements, natural gestures, and appropriate expressions. Think about the implications for a moment. Corporate training videos where you never need to book a conference room or coordinate schedules with presenters. Marketing content where you can A-B test different spokesperson styles without hiring actors. Educational content where teachers can create personalized lessons without being on camera themselves. But here's what's really interesting from a competitive standpoint. Google is positioning this as a lightweight, prompt-driven alternative to traditional video production software. If Google can make video creation as easy as writing an email, they could fundamentally change how businesses communicate, how education is delivered, and how marketing content is produced. Story 5. AI safety gets real. The OpenAI lawsuit. We need to talk about the elephant in the room. Parents are suing OpenAI, alleging that ChatGPT provided responses that contributed to their son's suicide. This isn't just another lawsuit. It's a wake-up call about the real-world consequences of AI systems that millions of people interact with every day. 
The lawsuit claims that during a mental health crisis, the AI provided harmful advice that escalated the situation. OpenAI has responded by implementing new transparency updates and safety warnings, but the legal proceedings are ongoing, and the implications extend far beyond this single case. Here's why this matters for everyone, not just OpenAI. We're at a point where AI systems are sophisticated enough to engage in deep, personal conversations, but they're not sophisticated enough to understand the full context of human vulnerability. These models can discuss mental health, relationships, and life decisions with impressive fluency, but they don't understand the weight of their words in the way a human counselor would. This case could set precedent for how we think about AI accountability. Should AI companies be liable when their systems give advice during vulnerable moments? How do we balance the benefits of accessible AI support with the risks of automated responses during crises? The broader question is, are we moving too fast? The race to deploy more capable AI systems might be outpacing our ability to make them safe. This lawsuit forces us to confront the gap between AI that sounds human and AI that understands human consequences. OpenAI's response, adding more safety warnings and transparency features, is a step in the right direction, but it also acknowledges that current systems have limitations that users might not fully understand. This case will likely influence how all AI companies approach safety, liability, and user education going forward. Beyond the headlines, the lighter side of AI. Before we wrap up, let's talk about the story that's had everyone laughing this week, Taco Bell's AI drive through experiment. Customers have been sharing videos of the AI completely misunderstanding orders, adding things like 18,000 cups of water, or suggesting ice cream with bacon. Now, this might seem funny, and it is, but it actually highlights a serious point about AI deployment. The gap between lab performance and real-world application can be massive. These AI systems probably work perfectly in controlled testing environments, but put them in the chaos of a busy drive through with background noise, varied accents, and creative customers, and they fall apart. The viral nature of these failures is forcing Taco Bell to reassess their rollout, which is probably a good thing. It's a reminder that AI systems need extensive real-world testing before they're ready for customer-facing applications. But here's what's interesting. Customers aren't just complaining about the failures. They're actively trying to break the system for entertainment. This says something important about how people interact with AI. We're curious, we're playful, and we're not afraid to push boundaries. Any company deploying customer-facing AI needs to account for this reality. Story 6. AI Companions for Japan's Aging Society Finally, there's a fascinating development from Japan that points toward a very different kind of AI future. AI-powered robot dolls are being trialed as companions for elderly citizens, providing conversation, comfort, and emotional support. These aren't sophisticated humanoid robots. They're designed to be cute and approachable, with conversational personalities that can engage seniors in casual talk and respond to simple requests. The goal is to reduce isolation and provide therapeutic benefits in a society with rapidly aging demographics. While critics raise valid concerns about replacing human interaction with artificial companions, early trials suggest these dolls are genuinely helping improve well-being for some users. This represents a completely different approach to AI. Not as a productivity tool or entertainment platform, but as a social and emotional support system. This story matters because it shows how different cultures are exploring different relationships with AI. While Western companies focus on AI as assistance, tools, or entertainment, Japan is exploring AI as companions. These different cultural approaches to AI development could lead to very different technological futures. Analysis. What this week means for AI's future. Looking at all these stories together, several critical patterns emerge that will shape the next phase of AI development. First, we're seeing the maturation of multimodal AI, OpenAI's GPT. Real-time isn't just about better voice processing, it's about AI systems that can seamlessly integrate multiple types of input and output. This trend will continue until the boundaries between text, voice, image, and video AI become completely blurred. Second, the economics of AI are rapidly changing. 
XAI's aggressive pricing for coding tools is just the beginning. As compute costs decline and models become more efficient, we're going to see price wars across multiple AI categories. This is great for consumers, but potentially devastating for companies that can't keep up. Third, the big tech companies are becoming more independent. Microsoft's move away from total open AI dependency reflects a broader trend where major players are building their own capabilities rather than relying on partnerships. This suggests the AI ecosystem will become less collaborative and more competitive over time. Fourth, real-world deployment challenges are becoming more visible. The Taco Bell drive through failures and the OpenAI lawsuit both highlight the gap between AI capabilities in controlled environments and AI performance in the messy real world. Companies will need to invest much more heavily in safety, testing, and gradual rollouts. Finally, we're seeing different cultural and social approaches to AI emerge. Japan's companion robots, America's productivity-focused tools, and various approaches to AI safety suggest that the future of AI won't be uniform across the globe. The most important takeaway is this. We're transitioning from the wow, AI can do that phase to the how do we make AI do that safely, affordably, and reliably phase. Technical capabilities are largely proven. Now it's about execution, integration, and responsibility. What this means for you. If you're a developer, XAI's pricing disruption means you need to reassess your tooling costs and consider how AI-assisted coding will change your workflow. If you're in content creation, Google's vids capabilities and OpenAI's voice improvements suggest major changes in how video and audio content gets produced. If you're in business, Microsoft's AI independence and the broader multimodal trend mean you need to think strategically about which AI platforms you build dependencies on. More broadly, these developments suggest we're entering a period where AI becomes more integrated into daily workflows, more affordable for small users, and more capable of handling complex, multi-step interactions. But they also suggest we need to be more thoughtful about AI safety, more realistic about deployment challenges, and more strategic about platform choices. That's your comprehensive AI news breakdown for this week. From OpenAI's voice revolution to XAI's pricing disruption, from Microsoft's independence move to the serious questions about AI safety, this week showed us both the incredible potential and the real challenges of our AI-powered future. Which development impacts you most? Are you excited about real-time voice AI, concerned about the safety implications, or planning to take advantage of cheaper coding tools? Let me know in the comments below. I read every single one and often feature the best insights in future videos. If you want to stay ahead of the AI curve without getting lost in the hype, smash that subscribe button and hit the notification bell. We analyze the AI developments that actually matter for your future not just the flashy headlines that generate clicks. AI revolution isn't slowing down. It's accelerating into new territories we've never explored before. These stories prove that we're not just witnessing technological change. We're living through the birth of a fundamentally different relationship between humans and intelligence itself. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.